In 2008, as many of you will know, the world, through, the world went through a financial crisis. Uh, most people of the world actually didn't know what it meant, but uh, if you're in the business arena, you think, oh my God, the world is coming to an end. Uh, we went through what was termed the financial crisis. If you remember at that time, um, many of us in Asia were told one thing by the West. What was that? You please, you slouchy people, consume more, okay? You laggards, you must understand, you must consume more to rebalance the global economy. Uh, rebalancing the global econo uh, economy was essentially rebalancing the banks, the Western banks, who run a Ponzi scheme for about 50 years, but no one had caught on to it. So we were told to do that, and our governments felt very proud. Now the West needs us to save everyone, and we have the power to become the engine of growth. At the same time, about six months later, you will all have noticed that there was a run-up to what was called, called the climate change discussions in Copenhagen. Yes? At the same time, the same people, and particularly the political leaders, were going around saying, this is the most disastrous, this is the biggest challenge humanity faces. We must reduce emissions. And then oh, you all know what happened. Uh, China and India had got into that, you know, the per capita carbon dioxide emissions debate and say, you can't tell us to reduce emissions, etc. The poor Chinese, of course, were made the bad guys, but actually the Indians were very subversive at the Copenhagen, and I think rightly so, at the Copenhagen discussion. But the Chinese being, you know, nasty commies, uh, were dismissed in the world international media as polluters. Uh, but you all would know that the Chinese are only polluting for those who've laundered all their CO2 and uh, pollution through the Chinese, because it was easier to outsource it. It's called the Harvard Business Model, if you haven't heard, okay? So they outsourced it, and, and the Indians also were complaining. So what I was rather confused about is why is it on one level we were being told to consume more, and the other hand we were being told to reduce emissions? If you come from a slightly technical background, which I can, I, I can own up to, you know that the dots do not connect. There is no way that we can reduce emissions of any sort if three billion Asians are urged to consume more. There is just simply no way. So why was there such great dishonesty in addressing this? No one talked about this. From all the commentators in the op opinion pages to the TVs, uh, shows, etc., no one wanted to go there because this was something you did not address because it was the truth. But what you can talk about is let's green this and let's green that and let's reduce emissions through magic. Uh, but let's not question the economic model of consumption-led growth. I don't want to talk about greening. I do not want to talk about environmental improvements. I want to talk about limits. I want to talk about restrictions. I want to talk about constraints. That mature democracies have reached a stalemate. Essentially, a political cycle of four to five years does not allow you to make the decisions that we need in the 21st century, which is very long term. And I don't pretend to want to get, I don't want to get into the debate about democracy versus, you know, more uh, authoritarian states, etc. But this is what we have to talk about. People, I mean, Obama came in with so much fanfare, I said on day one, this guy will do nothing, right? And he's done nothing. He can't even put a carbon tax because the, the, dem the democratic system in the U.S. is toxic. Two parties hate each other. So they will do everything to bring the guy down.